Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, today is what we call Maker Monday. I know you may be watching this video at another time. They're like, why is she saying Monday? Doesn't she know other people watch this other days? Yes, I know that. But this takes place on Maker Monday, and it sounds better than Maker Tuesday or Maker Wednesday. So we call it Maker Monday. <laughs> so um, this is always a day that I take an opportunity to be able to show you uh, the versatility of all the products here at a maker studio. So I have Instagram over here and I have uh, Facebook over here. So if you're watching this and it's live, this is Monday morning, beautiful Monday morning, April 1st. Um, it's 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. So you can make comments. We love comments. We love love. We love knowing where you're from. So even do give me some hearts and tell me what state and what city you're from. Um, that lets us just kind of see how we're reaching everybody. And also we want you to ask questions. This is an opportunity, I will answer them live. I've got two um, incredible creative women here that are um, acting as our camera people and they will ask questions. So that way you can um, ask me and I will answer them for you here live. All right, so take a glance really quickly at this project that I'm gonna show you today. This is a really fun project using one of our new stencils. This is Chinoiserie. If you want to, you can look it up. I talked about it a little last Friday, but Chinoiserie was really birthed um, in the early part of the 18th century, which was the 1700s. And there was a lot of stuff going on in the fact that there was a guy, his name, you've heard it. We've played the game in the pool growing up for years. Marco Polo was traveling to the Orient. There was a big trend for all things from the Orient. And so the only problem was that the boats bringing all of the things from the Orient were taking way too long. The English were beautiful cabinet makers and they said, you know what? Let's go on and we're going to create something that's called chinoiserie, which is based on oriental life, things that they did in every everyday life. Of course, they found that they had cute little umbrellas. They had um, the vegetation, the flowers, the, um, the gardens that they had that were um, strictly with that, that area of the world, their practices, um, the creativity, the art, all of that that they used was all very much on trend and very vogue. And so they took those lifestyles, the things that they were doing, and they created them into a form of art that was called chinoiserie. And the English were actually putting that on the furniture because the, pe the panels and the things coming over from the Orient a lot of times were much too small for the size of the cabinetry that they wanted to be able to have. And so this whole chinoiserie and this very classical trend that was started by the English, um, has been around longer and has stayed stronger um, as far as a design element than any other period of time. Chinoiserie is making a retrend again because it's very classic. Um, it was big in the 70s. Guess what? Everything that was big in the 70s is coming back. So the classical nature of it, um, to me, it never goes out of style. I have some beautiful oriental lacquer pieces that have chinoiserie on it that I cherish and love. So I'm excited to be able to introduce you to this whole world of chinoiserie through this beautiful stencil that we've just um, brought out um, as of last week in our collection. So this fun little project that we have that we're gonna be showing you here today is for you to be able to create a placemat and some napkins. Now, I'm gonna show you what's in the kit, but of course you can do all kinds of things with this stencil. We've put together, uh, this week, we've put together a kit for you. So, and it has special pricing, so you will get this um, entire chinoiserie stencil that you can do a lot of different projects with. You'll also receive two placemats. These are um, a great material that you can wipe off, you can clean, you can do all kinds of um, different designs on them and use them for a lot of different holidays and occasions. So you get two of these surfaces um, in your kit. You get a sponge brush, a spreader, and two inks, and then you also get your Rescue Restore paint. All right, so let's go over this really quickly, how to be able to create this placemat as well as some napkins. So I'm gonna pull this material aside now remember, we're live, so if you're catching this and you have a question, 
um, feel free to be able to ask me. All Just right. Some hellos from Atlanta and Albuquerque. Hey and guys. Of hearts and love. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So here's the rescue restore paint. I wish we had smell a vision. You could tell it by, by smelling this. It smells beautiful. Um, and I'm just going to pour a little bit into a container. It's a little bit easier to get to when you're going to be painting with it to be able to put your brush in a little bowl. Um, you can use a paper bowl, a glass bowl, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to take my sponge brush here and I'm just going to saturate it just a little bit. I want to make sure that it's really absorbed into the sponge. Then I'm going to offload it just a little bit and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to paint one side and the edges of my, what's going to be my placemat. So as a rule, I usually tell people, as far as painting, if I hold this up, does that make that a little bit easier to see in the light? You want to do long, clean strokes. And with these darker colors, it would probably be my suggestion, wouldn't probably, but my suggestion is to do thin, two thin coats. So. I want you to come on, you're going to notice, you don't have to clean this because this is a nice raw surface. You want to be able to put on um, a coat, allow it to dry about 30 minutes and then come back and put on another coat. But see how I'll do long clean strokes. I just want to make sure too that I keep a wet edge and I'm, and I'm painting fairly quickly. This is going to dry down to a beautiful matte finish. And I've got one that's already completed. So you get the idea of what we're going for here. So I'm gonna set this aside. Someone asked if you could buy extra placemats on their own. Um, well, you could get placemats from anywhere that you wanted to be able to work with. For us, as far as in this project, um, we have it for two. So- um, Can you buy uh, more of these surfaces on their own? Um, or, I mean, you could get another kit, but right now we just offer two of these surfaces um, as far as in this particular project. So, but I'll check with the powers that be. All right, so, um, all right, so this has got a beautiful matte finish, as you can see on here. The great thing about the Rescue Restore paint, you do not have to seal it. Where with a lot of other chalk-based paints, if you wiped it with water, it's gonna come off. Ours is not that way. You do not have to seal it. So if you love these beautiful matte finishes, you can use this on a wall. It's beautiful, um, but it's great on projects like this. So now I'm gonna work with my, um, with my stencil. So you'll notice the packaging that this comes in. You'll have a backing like this, and it's also adhesive. So if, you, if you're watching this for the first time and you're not familiar with our stencils at all, you're gonna notice something very special about this and the fact that it is adhesive. You can use them over and over again, and they're gonna have an adhesive back, so it allows you to be able to adhere it to the surface. So notice how I'm just gonna separate that edge right there and I'm gonna pull it apart. So notice the other thing, see the shininess of that back, how it's adhesive, but look at the other thing. Can you see my finger under here? This is a mesh material. So a lot of people use silhouettes and crickets and they make their own stencils. There's no way that you will ever see this little monkey, how adorable he is. You'll never be able to get this kind of spotting and detail on this monkey. Um, and the other pieces, the pagodas on here, with a silhouette or a cricket. It's not possible. This is a patented process that allows you to be able to get this kind of incredible detail, um, just like you would be silk screening. So the cool thing about it is with these stencils, you can use them um, on fabric, on wood, on pillows. I could make an incredible chamoiserie pillow. If you, um, if you didn't see our Facebook Live on Friday, where Laurie and I were working on some mirror, you need to go back and watch it. Um, and we were using this chinoiserie stencil. It's amazing. Um, so don't think about just maybe this surface that we're working on today. Think about, wow, you could do a pillow. You could actually do it on a wall um, and repeat this. So I'm just gonna line this up. I wanna make sure, you're, you're gonna notice when you're working with this, there's actually a little border. Can you repeat what the blue Rescue Restore paint is? You mean as far as the, the, um, color. the color? It's Summer Nights. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous blue. 
All right, so now I'm just gonna spread this out. I wanna make sure that it's nice and even and smooth. So you're gonna notice, see at the top, see where this design ends? Can you see that? Where that design ends? So it's gonna give you a little bit of a border um, at the top, so I just wanna make sure that you get that lined up well, make sure that you spread it out. And then we have in here, this is um, a white ink. It's a sample of our white gel ink. That's what we're gonna be using on here. Now these are permanent. So let's say you wanna be able to do this, but you wanna be able to wipe it off and you don't want it to be permanent, then I would suggest using our chalk art. We have a chalk art and we have a gel ink. The gel inks can be used on surfaces like this, uh, but they're more permanent and they are beautiful for fabrics as well. So you could be using that um, on fabric. All right, so I'm just gonna load up a little bit of the ink like this and I'm gonna choose an area that I wanna be able to lay this down. Now one thing a lot of people, they'll lay down um, an area like this and they put on too much. I want you to spread it. Now look how far it goes. Does that amaze you? I want you pushing it through that mesh material because that's going to allow it to be push through the mesh and get on that other surface. Look how that little bit, look how far that went. Isn't that yummy, easy, fun? So I'm gonna load up just a little bit more ink. Look at that, now watch. Now I'm gonna turn this to a 45 degree angle and I'm spreading it. Notice the other thing I want you to do, I want you to work fairly quickly. I, I know it's people are like, but I love doing it. I wanna work on it slow. I need you to get this spread everywhere fairly quickly before it starts to dry on you. So I'll just, the spreader, you're gonna get one of these spreaders in this kit. You can cut them too if you want to, if you don't wanna work on it on such a large surface. Patricia asks, when you push that much, do you experience any problems bleeding on the edge of the mesh? On the edge of the mesh, I want to stay away from the edge of the mesh. Um, so I'm just trying to basically get it through to where it's all even. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So I'm going to pull this away. Tell you what, I'll put just a little bit more here. I don't want y'all to think I stopped. Are there any other questions? Yes. How much is the kit? I think it's forty-eight dollars. Mm -hmm. That includes your um, your placemats. Both of your placemats, it includes this stencil, um, it includes the inks, the, um, the sponge brush, the spreader. So it's everything that you need except for the napkins if you want to add napkins. All right, so I just wanted to do enough so that way you could see it. Now I'm going to pull this up. Look at that. How easy is that, guys? Look at the detail on that. Does that blow your mind? You can't get this look with a, see, look at the details with this little pagoda here. See that, that roof? Look at all of this. Look at even the little drops, almost like tiny little tassels. Can I put that up in the light? Can you see that? You can't get that from a silhouette or a cricket. This is a process with our stencils um, that is patented that allows you to be able to get this kind of detail. Loving, 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 loving. So fun. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside. Now, I can take this and I can um, just take a little piece of, a little Tupperware container with some warm water and I'm gonna set this down in it and just a little sponge and I'm gonna clean it off. And then that way I'm gonna lay it down on my counter and let it dry, air dry. I would prefer that you not take a paper towel or anything that has a lint-free I mean a lint backing on it or a lint material that could get into this adhesive because then that's gonna be where it's not as sticky. You won't be able to use it as much. Um, so that way it can air dry. And then I'm gonna put it back with my backing and put it back in the package that it came in. That way I can use it again. All right, so now I wanna show you something else. Look at these adorable little napkins that we have with this. Is this so cute? Guys, I'm just gonna tell you. Um, these, if these were in a gift shop, these would be very expensive. So, you know, we talk about crafting a beautiful life. Um, we, we love creating things that you get to enjoy the bragging rights from, but also that 
that are classic, that are very much on trend, because I want you to be able to make something. I want your friends going, oh, I could never do that. And you're like, no, I promise, this is so easy. And I want you to be able to give them gifts that they're like, wow, that was so nice. But I want you to be able to enjoy the process of making something for someone. But how fun is he? I just, monkeys are coming back, cheetahs, all that type thing. Everything that was big in the 70s and 80s are coming back. So let's look at this stencil again. Look how, as you'll see the little pagodas, you'll see them carrying water. Um, you know, you look at the birds. Um, the umbrellas, everything. You can dissect this and be able to use it on something else. And that's what we did. So look how we took our stencil and we cut it out to where this pagoda uh, was in, the other pagoda was in the center. And I'm just gonna lay this down on my napkin, which I'm gonna show you. Let me go in and lay out my napkin. I don't wanna have it folded while I'm working on it. I wanna make sure that the surface is nice and flat and protected. A lot of times, especially when you're working with darker inks, if you have it folded like this, the ink will bleed through. So make sure that you just open it up and that you've got a nice flat surface area. It would probably be a good idea to just iron it before you started to work on it. Are we good on questions? I think uh, Patricia, who asked about the bleeding on the edge, she meant within the design. The Patricia, that may be, uh, if we get too much ink on, you know, onto our spreader, um, and test it a lot of times, we all have to get to a point of understanding how much pressure, what's the consistency about how much to put on. And a lot of times people, they load up too much ink or too much chalk art at one time. Um, but if you just do a little, you'll see about how I'll normally use like a dime's worth and I spread it out. It'll be much easier and much prettier to work with. All right, so look how this is also, it's adhesive. I'm taking it off the back. And see this little area, see this fold right here? That's where my napkin, look at that. That's how my napkin was folded. So this is the center. This is the area where I'm gonna be working on. You don't wanna work on that crease because that way when you come back and you fold your napkin, it's not gonna be as pretty. So I'm just gonna lay this little monkey guy. Look how I want him to kind of be to the side like this. I want it to be more up and down. So I'm gonna lay the umbrella a little bit more up and down like this. And then I'm always gonna take my hands and just kind of press it in like that. And now I'm gonna take my gel art. Now remember, this is an ink, it's a gel ink that will be permanent on this fabric. Now, here's the other thing you're gonna to have to make sure of. Make sure that after you do this, that this sits here for about two to three hours. It's got to dry. Then after it dries for two to three hours, I want you to come back and I want you to set maybe a piece of cloth, something that's lint free on top of it. And I want you to heat press it with the iron. That will set this ink into the fabric and that's going to make the, that that ink is set into the fibers. It's gonna last a lot longer. The other thing is I want you to remember is make sure you wash these in cool water. And I would prefer you not to throw them in the dryer. If you can lay them out, they're gonna last longer. They won't fade as much. If you're doing them on clothes, which a lot of our stencils are fantastic on clothes, um, just make sure that you turn the clothes inside out before you wash them, it'll also um, add to where they don't fade as much. All right, are there any questions? Um, what does the back of the finished product look behind where you inked? Well, let's see, here's the front. So I'm gonna turn this around like this so you can see, there's the back. The only reason I'm just saying, make sure that it doesn't um, that you just protect it, that you've got it on a surface. You don't want to lay it there where it's doubled, so that way you could have a tendency to bleed through. But that's what it looks like on the back. Very pretty. Do you need to pre-wash the napkins? I don't think it's necessary for you to pre-wash them. Um, that's not going to affect it much at all. Um, now, if you've got something like a canvas piece that maybe has size on it, and size not like we gild, but like a starch, might not be a bad idea to just clean it a little bit and get that off. If you wanna pre-wash your napkins, you can. Main thing is just to make sure they're nice and ironed before you actually get to this point. 
All right, these are great, great, great questions. All right, so I'm gonna take just a little bit of my ink. Look how I've just taken my spreader and I'll cut it up so it's a little bit smaller. If you're working on small areas like this, it may be just a little bit easier to navigate because you wanna stay away from this bird, these birds on either side. I'm just interested in my monkey and this little umbrella. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my ink. A little bit goes a long way. So there again, you see about the, the size of it. It doesn't take much. All right, so I'm gonna come back. Look how I'm gonna be really careful to stay away from these birds. Enjoy the process. You don't, this is not a race, especially if you like getting together with friends and making these. These can be so fun. If you're, if you're watching this, we have a lot of makers that they love having community. They love being creative. We call it making with joy. And they teach classes. So you might want to just, you know, go on our main page and say, you know, who does classes in Albuquerque? Who does classes in Dallas? I want to know about this. This is fun. Virtual classes like this are fun, but nothing takes the place of getting with friends and being creative. All right. Makes me think this, this Thursday... I have one of my dearest friends in the world that is going to come in town, and we're going to be able to spend a lot of time together. And uh, I just think about, yes, it's great to talk on the phone. Yes, it's great to, um, to be able to FaceTime with her, but I want to see her. I want to be able to sit across the t table and have dinner with her and have a good time. So nothing will ever take the place from having community and being together. All right. So I'm just gonna lay that out there. I'm gonna lift this up. Ta-da! There's my little monkey. Then I'm gonna wash that off so that way I can use it again. It just kind of shows you. Here he is dry. He is gonna be darker when it's first put on. It's darker, but it's as it dries to completion and then when you put the, um, when you put the iron back over it, it's gonna go a little bit lighter. But that way it's still going to be beautiful. It looks very professional, um, and it's permanent. It's a permanent ink. That's what's so great about working uh, with these gel inks that we have. They're permanent, so they can be used on tennis shoes, baseball caps, clothes, um, napkins, um, anything. But you can use them on surfaces like this as well. So um, if you're interested in these placemats and these napkins that we've done today with our new chinoiserie stencil, um, you just have to go to the person that invited you. There's a link there that you can go on and, and purchase it online and we'll ship it to you. All that you'll need, you will need your own napkins or your own tea towels. Uh, you'll need a bowl to be able to work with, but everything else is gonna be included in your kit. So I hope you enjoyed this today. Um, we make sure that you watch, turn, tune in to watch us on Friday afternoon. We're gonna be showing you things that we've been working on the test kitchen here at a maker studio. And if you've been watching us for a while and you think you might enjoy being a maker, we have a beautiful community of men and women that love making and crafting and getting together with friends. We have a special going on starting today where you can join and be a maker for as little as $49.99. You will get a kit of stencils and samples and be able to make like seven or eight different projects. Uh, so if you've been thinking about being a maker for a while, we welcome you um, into our family. Um, and we have a little family of um, or community of makers that we love making and we love crafting the beautiful life together. Have a great, great start uh, to April and have a great week, everybody. Bye.